What's up, Canes fans? Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, powered by Anishar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Got a great, great interview with Canes basketball star Nigel Pack today. You will love that. Also, potential commitment at a key, key position coming soon. We will dive in to a crystal ball forecast. So a lot to talk about. I know a lot of people are excited, by the way, with the Florida Panthers. Big win yesterday. Of course, the Stanley Cup holding it high. Pete, get in here. I know you enjoyed that one. Uh, you know, we're not necessarily hockey guys, but uh, it was fun to watch the celebrations. I mean, the, it's something different when these guys are holding that cup over their head. Yeah, can't you know, kind of visualizing uh, number six for the Canes and what that celebration is going to be like, right? I mean, that that's uh, yeah. I mean, just getting excited thinking about that possibility one day, D. But again, we we all expect it to happen one day. It's funny you said that. That was exactly my thought process. Uh, one track mind here with the Canes. I was just thinking, man, how sweet that's going to be. I was actually mentioned that to my kids as well. Uh, by the way, but if you are a Florida Panthers fan and want to get championship gear, the spot to shop caneswear and caneswear.com they got all the championship gear available they've been they're they're the they're the panther spot they've been the panther spot forever so this is just the crowning achievement they got the absolute best there you go the full lineup caneswear.com or caneswear in davy if you're a panthers fan there's nowhere to go you can also go to pantherswear.com it'll take you to the same place that's only panthers but same company same guys shout out to brett and the boys up there i know they enjoyed the win also want to talk about our friends at Anishar and Levine Accident Attorneys. If you or someone you care about has been injured in an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. 1-800-747-FREE, 1-800-747-3733. Take back control of your life. All right, let's get into some Kane stuff here with a crystal ball that was very, very interesting to Miami. A guy we haven't talked about a ton, but is a big-time player, and that is Jarquez Carter. Four star out of Newberry, Florida. That is the Gainesville area. Defensive tackle, 6'2, 284 pounds. Um, this is somebody who took official visits to Ohio State, Penn State, UF, and UCF. So, again, you see some heavy hitters on that list, guys that produce big time defensive tackles, particularly Ohio State and Penn State on the defensive line. Those guys have been cooking and producing great players. So, very interesting visit list. Four star player visited Miami this past weekend and crystal ball to Miami. Uh, played a little basketball, according to his Max Press, which we always like to see the athleticism. Broward County kid, cousin of Jerome McDougal, actually, which we learned on the Canes Insight podcast um, when we interviewed him. So McDougal probably was the most dominant defensive end that I've seen <clears throat> at the University of Miami. Um, I know he's not the best, but from my own eyes, pass rusher, he was the most dominant that I saw. Um, Pete, what do you see when you watch this highlight? these highlights? Uh, another another. Big time athlete at that position, D, and that's kind of been the trend, right? I mean, you're not getting these these big lumbering interior linemen here. I don't know if he has that uh, inside outside versatility like some of these other guys, D, uh, but you see the quickness in the first step getting up field and then going and finding the ball carrier. Something that we've talked about a few times recently as Miami continues to try to load up um, with with some of these defensive linemen here in the class is. It's one thing to have the physical tools as a defensive lineman to get upfield and, and beat your, your block and disrupt, but to go then find and chase the ball carrier is it's an underrated trait, man. And, and having been, you know, around the NFL and, and having been an agent, that's something that a lot of these scouts look at. It's more than just the, the testing times and, you know, the strength, but are they going out there and actually making plays and getting the ball carrier down in the backfield, right? So as simple as that may sound, you see it all over the place here in his tape. Yeah, extremely productive. Like you said, the ball awareness. He's your typical three-technique defensive tackle body. This is not somebody who's going to be plugging multiple blockers. You're not going to put him right up on a defensive um, – or sorry, head up on an offensive tackle and use him as sort of that 3-4 defensive end. This is a pure – Three technique defensive tackle who is going to shade, who's going to get in gaps, 6'2", 284, that bowling ball frame, the athleticism. I mentioned he played basketball, but you see it on these films. You see the motor here chasing down plays. Again, the quick he's always the first one off the ball, which is something you want to see. I mean, that's a very quick test for defense alignment, particularly penetrating defensive tackles. Watch the ball. Who's the first one off it? He is consistently the first one off the ball. Again, you see the motor to chase if he's not making plays in the backfield. So has some power as well. 
really just exactly what you want from a penetrator. Floyd Bucard from Miami Central was a guy who was in a similar mold. I think there was some injury stuff with him, maybe causing him to to fade out away from Miami. And, and a guy like um, a guy like Carter to rise up on the board again, similar style, similar body type, similar athleticism. Carter probably more productive and. I think healthier at this stage of the of the day. Um, you know, Bucard missing time in spring. Adarika, Randy Adarika from Central, another name that had got a lot of traction with Miami early on. Visited some of these same schools, Penn State, for example. Visited Miami last weekend with Carter, but I think Carter's emerge is just the more. Comp- if you look at all those guys, Adarika, Bucard, Carter, Carter's the highest rated, but beyond that, he's the the probably the best combination of athleticism, health production size just someone who very safely checks a lot of boxes and another guy that is not really from uh, typical miami territory right i think some people had him as a, a gator lean earlier in the process yeah newberry I, you know i've been by there that's up, at, up by gainesville but he's originally from broward county and you mentioned pete that you learned when you interviewed him mm-hmm. He is a cousin, like we said earlier, of Jerome McDougal, Stalker McDougal. Those are Broward County legends as far as as far as line play. So he has very good genetics in that respect and also South Florida ties, which I think makes sense with how quickly Miami jumped schools like Ohio State, Florida, Penn State in the process after his official visits there. And look, I mean, this is, this is a six, five minute highlight reel. And here you're still seeing sacks just blowing by guys. You know, look at the athleticism there. So a lot of times we talked about defensive tackle highlight reels. They're kind of boring to watch because the highlights end early. Um, they get some big flash plays. They put them early and then it's a two minute highlight reel. Cause the rest of the time he's either just gobbling up blocks or loafing. Um, this is a guy who's consistently making plays against decent competition. There he is power to, he just completely disregards the guard has that shock in his hands and the balance but also has the quickness and the coordination from his basketball days. So really, again, when you think about defensive tackles from Miami, you're talking about guys that are quick, guys that are powerful. And to me, an underrated trait with Miami's defensive tackles over the years, smart, right? So Warren Sapp, Vince Wolfork, Jerome Brown, these were guys that you hear them talk. I mean, they're leaders. You know, they, they had – they had an IQ to them that allowed them to to not only play the position at a high level, but also you know communicate and, and be a leader. And I think this guy, Pete, and we're going to cut to your interview with him in a second. He's somebody who studies the game as a defensive tackle and really can communicate the game in a way that's kind of unique. Again, there's only so many defensive tackle body types in the world with the athleticism and the size to do it. So you kind of run the gamut as far as personality. You kind of got to take what you can get. Armando Blunt last year, valedictorian type guy that was unique with his athletic ability and his size. Carter, from just hearing him talk about the game, seems like a real true student of the game. Yeah, and then again, this is just a, a little snippet here from the interview. I think like we did it like three, four months ago, D. So it was earlier in his recruitment. He did talk about Miami in the beginning of the interview, but um, it was about a 20 minute conversation. So I'm going to play a clip here. And again, talking about his maturity, the way he approaches the game. A lot of times these defense alignment aren't necessarily, you know, they're bull in, in, in a China shop situation, right? They, it's not that they don't uh, prepare for the game, but you hear him talk here and you really understand it's not just him. He's trying to make the guys around him better. So I'm going to play this clip right now. I, would, I watch film a lot. Um, while coach have a thing on huddle where you can check it. Um, I'm, I'm always up top. Um, I always try to get on the guys to watch film. Um, I'm the one who told our coach we should take notes in our end. Um, study hall. We should bring pencils and papers. I get on to the guys all the time about that. Uh, sometimes we, I made a group chat and then I asked everyone um, what type uh, what did y'all think about the game? Uh, what's the notes y'all have about the game? What, what y'all think we can get better at? Um, just studying the game. I study people that's in a higher level as me, like Aaron Donald, um, Chris Jones. I study them to try to improve my game. And sometimes I try to help my teammates on the sideline um, if I know um, that because they look up to me. So I try to help them just then, just then, just to get them better. So, yeah, I mean, look, the, you, you you hear the maturity in his voice there. And again, that's just a, a little bit of a snippet. But he talked about earlier in the interview how he really enjoyed getting to sit down with Jason Taylor and watch film with him on an earlier visit to Miami. So we understand the type of character that Coach Cristobal and staff are continuing to bring in here. 
and someone who hopefully ends up being a cane and, and helps raise the level of his teammates as well. Yeah, no done deal yet. But again, Gabby Crystal Ball, I'm going to do some digging on my own end, but I know Gabby has very good information. So a lot of momentum building with Jarquez Gar- Carter of Newberry to the University of Miami. Listen, if you want to keep landing premium defensive tackles with high character and athletic ability, canesconnection.com, Miami's official NIL collective. Be a part of the solution. I know you're listening to this because you're a hardcore recruiting fan because you care about Miami. Be part of the cause. Don't just stand on the sidelines. Be part of it. Know that when they carry that sixth trophy, you played a role. Promo code CIS. Go to canesconnection.com. Put in promo code CIS. You get 20% off your first month. Plus, you get access to a private insider Zoom where I'll give you the absolute latest on all of these recruits. I'll get the info that day, and I'll kick it to you just like I get it. Again, more candid and and inside than I can do in an open forum when you got Canes and Gators lurking. So please check that out. We'll do our next call on Thursday. It'll be recorded for those who can't make it. You can do live Q&A if you're there as well or send in questions ahead of time. For Canes Connection members, use promo code CIS. And we'll talk to another Canes Connection athlete right now. Somebody who we're really excited to see with the Canes basketball team. Final four, we've seen him there. We've seen him in some low points yesterday, de- dealing with some injuries. Last, last season, last, last season, season, not yesterday. Getting old. Well, I don't know, man. Maybe you were up celebrating all night the, the Panthers uh, The Panthers win. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. Um, I was drinking some uh, some some sparkling water. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, Nigel Pack last season. Injuries, didn't get to see his full potential now. With Jalen Blackman in the backcourt, Jaleel Bethea, an improved and uh, increased size in the front court. I think you'll see the best of Nigel Pack. Really smart kid, really engaging kid. Enjoyed the conversation with him, Kane's Connection athlete. So without further ado, Nigel Pack. All right, Kane's fans, very excited to be joined now on the Kane's Insight podcast by University of Miami point guard Nigel Pack, also a Kane's connection athlete nigel appreciate you taking some time to to join the show today recent graduate man congratulations on that Um, thank you thank you how you you. feeling you feel any different uh now that you officially have that diploma yeah i feel great i mean it feels like you know i've completed a lifelong dream um it's been excellent to be able to accomplish that especially from an amazing university like the university of miami so um it's just been great and been able to complete that and you know finally get that diploma is an awesome feeling yeah, and I, you know, I had a chance to actually meet your parents a couple of years ago at one of these events, and I know that was something that was very important to them. So just talk about what it was like to be able to experience that with them down here in, uh, in Coral Gables. Yeah, they, they made sure they made it a very big, big deal. I had a bunch of family come down, parents, brother, sister, aunties, uncles, everything. A lot of people came down to support me, and I was really you know appreciative of that opportunity. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, and most of the, my friends were, you know, graduating too. So we got to all sit together. Um, so it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that moment. Um, it was definitely very special for me and it'll be definitely something I remember for the rest of my life. So what's the grad, uh, the grad degree route looking like here? What's, what, what are you going to be doing now for grad school? Yeah, I'm going to be getting a a master's in the sports administration program. So, um, I've been, you know, looking into it right now. I'm about to start here soon in the fall though. Um, so right now I'm just a you know, regular person with basketball, though. Nigel, you know, you, when you first came in, you were kind of like the face of the transfer portal almost for a minute. You know, when you came in, yeah. obviously the team had some very quick success. Now almost a whole new team coming in, and you're the old vet. You've been here now entering your third year. How's that shift in role where you're like you're Mr. Miami right now? Yeah, it, it kind of went from a shift from being the new guy on, on the block to having to lead the rest of the guys and, you know, show them the right way. Um, and it's been great. A lot of all the new guys came in. They've been, you know, uh, ears open, ready to listen, ready to work hard. Um, you know, we've been going for a few weeks now and it's been, you know, nothing but great and positive, you know, energy around the court um, with coaches, the staff, the players. Everybody's been really positive and open to working very hard. So I'm really excited to see what this team holds. Um, I'm very confident in us. I know everybody else in the team's confident as well. Let me ask about the vibe in those workouts, because, you know, a lot of times we're used to a couple of new guys come in, maybe some freshmen come in, but the team's core is still there. Yeah. This is almost like, you know, tryouts back in the day where like all the kids are kind of meeting each other for the first time and playing with each other for the first time. So how has it been like basically learning a whole new set of, of teammates and, 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 you know, styles and all that 
all at once here. It's been great. You know, these guys are, you know, easy to play with. Everybody is, you know, came from the respective schools and, you know, are really talented from wherever they're coming from. So it kind of makes my job easy, you know, especially with guys with high talent levels like that. And when they're open and ready to work, um, they're open to listening to the coaches and everybody as well. Um, it just makes it really easy to play with these type of guys. You know, the, the atmosphere has been very competitive. And I feel like that's really key for us right now, especially in the summertime, for us to be able to get better. Nigel, what, what would you say the biggest learning, you know, experience about last season was obviously coming off of the incredible highs of the year before of the Final Four, really a historical run here for the program. And you were one of the major parts of that. But then, of course, last year, you personally, but the team dealing with the injury uh, issues and then you know, not having the season you guys had hoped for in the beginning of the year. Did that kind of give you a different perspective on your approach this off season and, you know, heading into your last year here? Yeah, especially it's very important. I know we have a lot of older guys this year, so it's going to be important for us all to take, make sure that we, we take care of our bodies, especially in the time right now. Um, it's important to get, you know, the proper amount of rest. But it's also important to, you know, work out when you need to and get better at the same time. So, you know, that makes sure that's a really key for all of us. Um, I know of all of us is, you know, taken into our own hands of, you know, getting better diets. I know that for sure for me as well. Um, that's a key thing with, you know, being healthy is having a good diet. So I've been trying to change mine around as well. Obviously, I'm not going to be perfect, but being able to, you know, just make some some changes here and there, I feel like go a huge way for us. Um, and obviously, you know, it stinks to have a year that we did out there coming off such a great year, but it just gave us some humble pie, honestly. You know, sometimes you could think you're too high up. Um, we had a very, very talented team. We were expected to be such a really, really good team. And, you know, sometimes you got you to gotta put the work in behind it and, you know what I'm saying, stay humble be behind everything. So, In terms of your diet, what changes have you made? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not a big cook person at all. I, I don't cook to save my life. So I, I've, you know, implemented, you know, meal preps with, with, the, um, with the guy. Um, he's, you know, been making me, you know, meals that are a lot more healthier side instead of just eating out you know, fast food places or going to sit down somewhere and eating. Um, I feel like that those changes can, you know, really help my diet, especially um, and especially drinking a lot more water, you know, just grabbing a bottle of water here and there, um, being thirsty or not, just grabbing a bottle and drinking something. I feel like it just makes everything a lot smoother. No, no doubt about it. Now, listen, you, you're a team guy. You've adjusted your role as needed, but I feel like you have kind of a very difficult job because you being someone who, is a leader on the floor, a, a point guard at times, but then also someone who's relied upon to score and take over games. It's, it's, it seems like it's, it's a lot on your plate. What is your mindset going into this year as far as your role and what the team needs you to do? Yeah. Well, first off, I've been doing my best at leading this, the, all the new guys, you know, we got so many of them, um, so many guys that, you know, have no clue what, you know, the identity of Miami basketball is and, you know, trying to teach these guys like, look, you know, last year was a thing in the past. The year before, we were great. That's also a thing in the past as well. But we're, we're focused on right now getting better today. And I feel like everybody's taking that to their own hands. The coaching staff, um, everybody else, um, even some of the players that are returning, everybody's taking it to their own hands. Like, hey, you know, we don't want what happened last year. We got a lot of old guys. Like, this is their last opportunity. So I can see, you know, in everybody's hands, like, hey, you know, we're trying to take fully advantage of this and, you know, leading these guys and make sure that, you know, we all play together. We all have this right mindset. We all put the team first and winning first. Um, and, you know, I feel like that's my role to be able to pull everybody together when, when things get kind of chaotic, um, but also be able to help this team win. Now, Nigel, let's talk a little bit about – sorry, sorry, D. Let's talk a little bit about some of the additions, you know, to to the, the roster. We had A.J. State and McCray on earlier. Yeah. Um, obviously, Lynn Kidd, Brandon Johnson, Kyrie Huey. So – you mentioned it, a lot of experience, a lot of guys who have played a, a lot of college basketball games, which, as we all know, is very valuable come the end of the season, which is, yeah. you know, where, where you guys want to be. So, obviously, it's going to be a different group. You, Matt, returning, um, a couple of the guys returning there. But from, like, a skill set standpoint, can you just talk about what you think some of these guys bring uh, to the roster? Yeah, well, we can start off with, with Lynn and Kyrie first. Obviously, those guys are huge bodies that we needed. Um, you know, we've been playing that small ball role for the last few years, or at least since I've been here, we playing that, that small five role. And, you know, that was very successful for us um, the, a couple of times. But now we figured out, like, hey, we, we need to go get some some true big men. 
Um, some guys that can really play the five man. They got some real size. Uh, and I feel like that's really been an advantage to us. Um, Lynn and Kyrie have been showing their size, you know, really, really well, especially in practice, um, you know, with their rebounding ability and their ability to finish around the basket. Um, so I feel like that'd be really key for us, especially, um, you know, guys going to have to respect our, our bigs, um, you know, not be able to help off and things like that. Um, and especially with, you know, especially all the new guys that we've gotten that are guards, um, we've picked up a lot of shooting fi firepower um, out of the transfer portal and with our freshmen. Um, so that's really key for us. It's going to be hard because we were able to space the floor, but also we have good inside presence as well. In terms of those guards, I want to ask you about that because between you and Jalen Blackman, Jaleel Bethea, again, guys that can handle, that get score, that can create for others. How's it been not just working with those guys and getting to know them, but also sharing the court with those guys and making your games fit together? Yeah, this is the, the best time for that. And, you know, this is why we, we work out and we practice in the summertime to be able to, you know, figure out what lineup works best and, excuse me, so whoever, um, can you know, plays well with each other, um, how do you, how do they like, you know, to play their games, um, who likes the ball win. Um, and I feel like it's the perfect time. You know, we've been, you know, mismatching teams when we, we scrimmage each other and things like that and being able to play with those guys and see their talents level and how they're able to, you know, operate with the ball and being able to create as well. I feel like it just, you know, makes us harder to guard um, with, with guys that, you know, can score the ball, but also create for others. And you have more than one of those type of guys on the on the team and you can have more than one on the floor at, at one time. I feel like it's just really hard for the defense to pick and set and lock in on one person. In terms of we talked about on the court, off the court, you know, what are the things that you are passionate about and that you'd like to be doing when you're not practicing basketball or, or watching film? Yeah, I mean. I'm not I'm a really simple guy. I, I like movies. So I've been at the movie theater pretty recently. So a few movies that came out that are one of my top favorites. Um, I'm also a video game person. Me and some of the guys on the team actually play video games together. I have to practice a lot. I know I play with probably Lynn the most. Um, and, you know, Lynn likes video games just like me. We play 2K a lot. So just some simple things like that. Um, I obviously enjoying the Miami weather also. So anytime I can get out, you know, go to the pool, go to the beach, something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's really fun to do. Are, are you fully a Floridian at this point? You know, and obviously Indianapolis roots. Are you fully Floridian right now? I, I think I probably am at this point. I feel like, you know, their ways are starting to, to get on to me. I'm starting to use a little bit of their lingo. I'm starting <laughs> to the, like the different foods now that, you know, people make here in Florida. So, I mean, I think it's starting to grow on me a lot. You mentioned yeah, your parents your parents must, must uh, enjoy coming down here as well. Oh, I bet they do that. The weather here is probably crazy. I know most of the time when I'm talking to them, it's super cold there. And I'm like, what? It's like 80 degrees right now. So. <laughs> you mentioned you've seen a couple of movies you really liked. What are the movies that are really uh, you're enjoying these days? Yeah, so um, Planet of the Apes has always been a series that I've, I've enjoyed. I really didn't like the new one too much. Just a little different than the, the other ones that I've seen. And then the new Bad Boys movie as well was pretty fire. And, and that's what made me feel like a Floridian because <laughs> I could see all the different Florida spots and Miami spots. I'm like, oh, I know where that's set. So it kind of felt like it was touching home. Well, just wait. If you're a gamer, just wait till the new uh, GTA comes out. You're yeah, no, I'm waiting. Going with that. I'm waiting for that one. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Yeah, you'll you'll definitely you'll you will definitely feel, you you will feel like not not just a Floridian because I'm sure you know Miami's way different from the rest of Florida. You will yeah. feel like you're, you're a real 305 boy at that yeah, point. Yeah, I hope I can drive to the Wasco Center in the GTA Six. Hopefully they got it like that. I don't know though, but hopefully it's something like that. There you go, Nigel. Uh, one more thing for me about you know basketball related. What what has been coach l's message to the group obviously it's very early right yeah. but it has to be you know a, a good feeling knowing there's someone like him who has a ton of experience working with a bunch of different teams because obviously the talent seems to be there but it's about how it all meshes together yeah. right so mm -hmm. what has his message and the coaching staff's message been uh to you guys as a group at this point yeah everything's been about being together you know we've done a lot of things together um, we have our hardest lifts of the week on Friday and we smash everybody in one group. Um, just so we know how tough it is, just going to be everybody together. You know, we're going to struggle together. We're going to suffer together through pain. Um, it's just been about being together. That's our thing. When we're at, you know, at practice, we stay together all the time. It's just about getting everybody to buy into, you know, the, the, the brother to the left, the brother to the right, and, you know, playing their best for them and not for themselves. And I feel like that's what the message has been so far. It's still early. Um, obviously the message is probably going to, you know, change a little bit as we get in, you know, into more season, more detail. But 
as of right now, everything's focused on, you know, being one team instead of being individuals. You listen, you see Keyshawn George got invited to the, to the NBA draft. Uh, you're, you know, Isaiah Wong already made it to the NBA, Jordan Miller. So mm-hmm. I know that's a goal of yours and you've been around guys that have made it. You've made plays against guys that have made it with guys that have made it. So I know you have a lot of confidence in your ability to get to that level. What are some things, maybe, whether it's feedback from coaches, feedback from scouts or agents or, or what have you, that you've got to say, all right, this is something we're going to work on, not only to help the team, but also to help yourself develop your skill set to make it to the next level? Well, yeah, first off, is just making sure that I'm healthy. Um, last year was kind of an up and down struggle bus for me, um, being healthy, not being healthy, playing a game, missing a game, things like that. So that's no, I know that's something within myself that I don't even need to ask that I know is what people at the next level are going to see for me. Um, I've also gotten feedback about my leadership ability, you know, want to see me lead a team, want to see me be able to, you know, put guys in the right position. That's the point guard's job is to lead a team, be an extension of the coach on the floor. Um, coach Ells told me that. I've heard it from some of the assistant coaches. I've heard it from guys at the next level. Like, this is some stuff they want to see me, especially with my size. They want to see how can I run a team? How can I make guys around me better? And that's, you know, something I've really taken into this year, especially being the old guy. Like, this is the, the most perfect opportunity for me to be that leader just because, you know, guys are new here. Guys don't know exactly what to do. I've been here, what, three years now. So I, I kind of know the ins and outs of everything. I know co- how Coach L likes things. I know how practice should be ran. I know when, you know, when we were winning games, how practices looked. And when we were losing games, how practices looked. So I feel like this is a perfect opportunity for me to establish that leadership role with this year's team. Look, if you end up leading this team, a whole new team after – Taking another team to the finals, you're already kind of a hurricane legend, but that'll take you to a whole nother, whole nother hey, level. That's the plan. That's the plan right there. So look, obviously, Kane's connection brought us together here for this interview. You um, are someone who have, has a great relationship with Kane's connection. What is that relationship meant for for you and your family and, and and your you know your brand and you know just you as a as a growing professional? Well, it's meant a lot, you know. The, the Canes family and the Miami Hurricane name is known worldwide and being able to use Canes Connect as a opportunity to network, to connect myself with, you know, guys that may be, a, you know, a business owner or could see myself somewhere in the future where I might, you know, need this type of connection. I feel like this is the perfect opportunity because, you know, we, we bond, we have, you know, a mutual interest and that'll be the Miami Hurricane. So use, being able to use this platform, um, being able to meet new people that I might not be able to met. Um, just walking around in Miami um, to be able to use this for my future life. And, you know, whenever the ball stops bouncing um, is what I feel like is the best and the key and the, the best thing out of, you know, I'm getting out of Kane's Connect. Great talking to you, Nigel. Um, again, with Kane's connection here and best of luck, best health, obviously Thank Thank number you. one, most importantly, like, like we were just mentioning um, and, Fans are excited about this team, man. We're, you know, we're we're starting to get to know the new guys one by one here as we're having them on the show as well. And they seem like, uh, you know, a great group of guys as well. So the fans are excited to see you guys take the court this year. So once again, thank you, Nigel Pack. Thank you. I appreciate it for having me. Yeah. This an insight to the Canes And you know we ain't playing no games Joaquin said dominate, so that's what we do Home of the legends and 7th floor crew Down in Miami where hurricanes brew You here for the rumors, we bring you the news Cause it's all about the you And nobody do it like Canes in sight 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 it's Kane's insight.